This is the second section on chapter six, which is all about trig functions. And today we'll be looking at the graphs of set cosecant cot. So we already know that set cosecant cot are the reciprocals of, um, sec is the reciprocal of cos, cos x, cosec is the reciprocal of sin x, and cot is the reciprocal of tan x. We need to know what their graphs look like. So let's start with um, sec x. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the graph of cos and use it to help me get to the graph of sec. So the graph of cos is like that. Now what I'm going to do is look at what's going on and see if I can figure out the reciprocals of these graphs. Now I know that this one goes up to one and down to negative one. Now, what I need to do is to work out the reciprocals of these values and then see if I can join them up. So I'm gonna put one here and negative one down here, right? So let's start here. Now the reciprocal of one is one. So the reciprocal part of the graph should be here yeah now then the graph decreases and the reciprocal of something that's decreasing is something that's increasing and then here at this point where the graph is zero what should be happening is my graph should be shooting off to infinity so here there's going to be an asymptote okay so what if i got a graph that's starting off down here increasing and then shooting off to an asymptote okay All right let's have a look at the other bit of the graph so if we go over here so we've now got a graph that's uh, going down to negative one now the reciprocal of negative one is negative one so i should have a graph that's down there and again when it gets to this point when it goes to zero the reciprocal of zero is infinity so the graph should be shooting off to infinity. Now reciprocals don't change the signs of numbers, they just change their size. So what's gonna happen here is that this is gonna appear from negative infinity, shoot up to one, and then go back down to um, not quite that. No, I was right. So like that and then shoot back down again and you've got this asymptote and then we've got this bit of the graph over here which is increasing to uh, one so we should have a graph that's decreasing down to one like that so this is our graph down the bottom here of sec x that's what the graph of sec x looks like okay let's do the same with sine this should be a bit quicker because um, we already sort of know what we're looking for so from sine we're going to um, cosec so again we'll start with a graph of sine which is like this okay and uh, let's see how then we get to the graph of cosec so anytime we we're at zero we've got an asymptote so there's one here at zero there's one here at pi or 180 and there's one here at 360 so we've got asymptotes there so what's happening first part of the graph well, let's do the ones so one here negative one so first part of the graph is increasing so my graph is going to be decreasing down to one and then where this is decreasing it'll be increasing again so it's going to be like that that shape turned inside out it's going to be like a u shape so it's going to look something like that okay 
and basically this other bit is just going to be like the same thing turned inside out or upside down so there we go so something like that let's draw that a little bit better there we go so you can see it's like the set graph but shifted across just like the sine graph and cos graph are like shifts horizontal shifts of each other so it's cosec x and then the last one is how we get from tan to cot so we'll start with a graph of tan and use that to get to the graph of cot now notice i'm only drawing these graphs between um naught and 360 or naught and 2 pi um, they do sort of carry on these are not the greatest sketches here but you get the idea right so there's asymptotes there now with this one where we have asymptotes we're going to have the graph going to zero yeah so the graph is going to be zero here it's going to be zero here and where the graph is currently zero which is here there's going to be asymptotes here where it's got zero at the moment there's going to be an asymptote here and there's going to be an asymptote here now remember where the original graph increases or decreases its reciprocal will do the opposite so here you can see the graph of tan is increasing off to infinity that means our graph is going to be decreasing down to zero and then we get this carries on like that and then this I'm gonna to have to move my little crosser across a bit but it should be going through that cross Oops. so let's put that back in and let's put a cross here there we go so that's our graph of cot x so you need to know what they look like you need to be able to reproduce them you need to know be able to do transformations of them um, but yeah see if you can remember those graphs of uh, the reciprocal functions cosec cot and sec okay so here we're just asked to sketch the graph of uh, sec between uh, negative 180 and plus 180 okay um, I think it's useful to marking every 90 degrees because every 90 degrees is where something is happening okay and mark the axis as well so this is theta this axis is sec theta and we want to mark one and negative one now hopefully you'll remember that the graph doesn't actually go anywhere between one and negative one it it um sort of lands above it or below it so sec that's the one that's related or it's the reciprocal to cos so let's think about cos cos starts at one so this is going to start at 1 and cos goes down so this is going to shoot up um, so if you think about the asymptotes uh, for the graph of cos it's 0 at 90 so asymptotes here and here and also yeah that's it when the graph is zero i don't think we get to the part where it's zero again so where graph the original graph goes down um cos uh, sec is going to go up so we're going to have like a u shape in there and then it sort of does the same thing at the bottom it's going to shoot up like that and then it's going to shoot like that okay so that will be our graph 
of sec theta. Okay, right, I've put the graphs, pictures of the graphs here at the side to help. So we're not having to do them from scratch again. So um, part A, uh, graph of four cosec theta between minus pi and pi. That's like going from 180 to negative 180. Now, what four cosec does is, or four in the front here, that's a transformation which is going to stretch the graph by four in the y direction. So actually, our graph is going to be going from four to minus four. So if I look at the graph of cosec, which is here, I can then just draw that graph in. Like that. So there's an asymptote here. There's one here. Um, there's gonna be another one over here. And I'm gonna have my u or n go like this. So that's gonna be my graph. Not the greatest sketch in the world, but it only needs to be a sketch. On the same axis, sketch the line of y equals x. Okay, well, if y equals x, if the x coordinate is pi, the y coordinate is pi, so it's three point something, it's gonna be about here. And when the x coordinate is negative pi, again, I'm gonna have something like this. So basically where the x and y coordinates are equal, have a straight line, something like that. Okay, so part A is the red line. Part B is the green line. And state the number of solutions. None, because they don't intersect. So no solutions since the lines do not intersect. Okay, right. So this one here, there's a uh, a couple of bits to the transformation. So this one here is gonna move the whole graph up by one. And this is going to squash it this way by a factor of two. And you can think of that as meaning, right, you're gonna get two cycles of the graph between naught and 360. Right, let's give ourselves plenty of space. So 360 there, 180, nine, uh, not 90, 270, 90, this is my theta. And that will be the axis one plus sec two theta. Okay, so if the whole graph uh, moves up by one, then that means that I'm probably gonna be going from two here and zero, because the graph is gonna be moving up from one, because normally it'd be one a negative one, but if you shift that up, it'll be naught and two. So the bottom bit of the graph um, will move up. So we're actually looking at this graph here. So imagine that one, the whole of that graph moving up by one and squashing it by two. One, okay, if we squash it by two, then normally what happens 
every 90 degrees will happen every 45 degrees. So there's an asymptote here at 90. So there's now going to be one at 45. There's an asymptote here at 270. So there's now going to be one at 135. Yeah, you can sort of see what's happening. There's another one at 450. So there'll be another one at 225. So you can see twice as much going on. And we can just fill in the gaps. So up there, that bit there, this bit here. This bit here, this bit here, yeah, and that should be our uh, final graph. So make sure you remember all those those different transformations. So exercise six B on page one four eight. A quick reminder of the transformations. So. That will move a graph up by A. This will move a graph this way by A. This will stretch a graph that way by A. This will squash a graph this way by A, or you could think of it as stretching that way, or you divide by A, and then the two sort of special cases is when you have this, that reverses the Y coordinate, so if you reverse the Y coordinate, you reflect in X axis, and this will reflect in y-axis.